We've got our players set and prepared. They're, they're actively playing Rondo as we're talking and, and beginning the session. So just an idea of, of what the next 45 minutes is going to be about. Rondo, for me, and, and, and some of you defined it as five versus two, uh, which has a loose interpretation. Five versus two, to me growing up, was anywhere along the lines of three versus ones, all the way into seven v twos, eight v threes. It essentially meant defenders in the middle with a group of players around them keeping the ball away. So the, the, the Spanish term for that game in Rondo, I think, keeps to, keeps to the idea of what that means and, and, and translate actually, translates actually a little bit better in that we're around the guy in the middle, right? We're around that one, two, three, however many defenders are in the middle, we're around them and trying to keep the ball. We talk a lot about the Rondo training, and it's pretty en vogue to say that Barcelona uses it a lot. And if you YouTube, if you type in R-O-N-D-O, Barcelona videos come up and you'll see them playing this kind of a game. And when they play it, it looks pretty special. The level of technique and, and uh, quality that they have in passing and receiving allows this to look very quick, very fast, and very skillful. It just so happens that our two-time European champions and World Cup winners are also from Spain. So it's a country that's very much in our, in our windshield right now, and we're looking at that and we're studying that. And what you'll find is a lot of this at the beginning of their training sessions. Now, U.S. soccer has just generated a curriculum. And in that curriculum, the, the composition of a training session has four components. Technical, tactical, physical, and psychosocial. So in creating your training session and putting in each of those things, this simple game transfers a lot of those pieces into implementation for young players. The technical is there, passing, receiving, control. The tactical is there. Where's the defender? I have to go in a different direction with the ball. The physical is there. There's movement. There's athletic positioning. There's quick feet. There's psychosocial there. And for those of you who were players and played 5v2s growing up, there's a great banter and a great enjoyment and a lot of fun that can be had into keeping the guy stuck in the middle, trying to get someone else to make a mistake to go in the middle. But there's a lot of interaction in this game that can happen on the training field. So it's, it's all-encompassing. It's, it's, for me, something that has become a core element of training sessions and a curriculum that we've developed in our organization at Lehigh Valley United. But we take it, we take it, and we, we go the next level. So it wouldn't make sense to have the whole training session look something like this. But it does make sense to take the essence of this game, right, players around, attackers around, the defender in the middle, and build upon that. What I'd like to do now is stop these guys have them line up, introduce them, and then we'll start talking about how we take this simple Rondo game and build upon it. So if I could have you guys just stand shoulder to shoulder on a line right here, everybody, right there, facing in that direction, facing me, shoulder to shoulder, we'll introduce you, and then we'll move on. I'm doing this just to give a context of what we're working with and what the possibilities are. These are players from our soccer club uh, and in the Lehigh Valley United organization, and they're at different ages. First off, in our context and in our training environment, we do mix players. We play them up. If I could have our true U9 players take a big step off the line. Nini's out. Sebastian's out. These are players who are actual and true U9s who are mixed in. And will be, be participating today. Step back in. 
if we could have our true U10s step out. All right, so we, we've got U10s mixed in, back in, U11s, U11s. There we have it, back in, and our U12s. And these guys who are standing out right now, as I transition from exercise to exercise and I need some leadership, I'll ask them to take the lead and be like little coaches out on the field and they do a great job. Back in you go. So we've got U9 through U12 here. It transfers through. They're technically sound, so this group is, is a group that will make sense. Numbers-wise, it'll, it'll grow to be a little bit too many at times, but we're going to have them all actively participate and all be in the session so that they don't have to stand on the sidelines and watch. They get to have some fun as well. Okay. Good. Then if I could have the blues take off their blue vest, just drop them over by the wall, and then link up with your color. What I need is in this square, the blacks. Okay. One in the middle, one touch. Get your game going. And in this square, the greens. One in the middle, one touch. What I would like is the guy in the middle to hold the vest, indicating that they're the defender. Guy in the middle has to hold the vest, indicate that they are the defender. When you get out, throw it down. Next guy's in. Begin. So what I have set up is the entire 45 minutes is on the floor with cones. I don't have to put another cone on the floor. All I have to do is pick them up as I transition from exercise to exercise. The balls are strategically placed. Other additional equipment is strategically placed so that I can keep my entire focus on what it is that they're doing and not have too much downtime in between. Helps the quality of, of what we're trying to achieve and what we're trying to do. So this is the basic game again. It's very difficult, obviously, for so many attackers with just one defender, very difficult for the defender to win the ball and to get out of the middle. Nobody wants to be in the middle, so ultimately their concentration and their focus is there. And just by not wanting to be shamed or punished or having to defend, nobody likes to defend, that, that focus is, is immediately there. Connor, come on in here. Nick Blacklock, come on in here. Connor, Connor Aiken, grab a, a futsal ball, please and start passing back and forth with Nick Blacklock. So to teach, to teach passing and receiving in, in a drilled way, like Nick Blacklock and Connor are doing right now, you, you, risk, you risk it becoming easy. You risk them beginning to start going through the motions. Technically, of the four criteria, the, the, the pass, there's technique to that. It's there. Physically, they're soccer players from our environment, so they're in their athletic positions and ready to play, and they're focused. Tactically, they don't have to make any decisions because there's no oppositions. No defenders in that. So rather than have them get their, repu their repetitions in drilling it in partners, we have them go into these games called Rondo, where a defender is forcing decision-making. A defender is forcing them to concentrate and not lose the ball at risk of having to go in the middle and be a defender. So without me saying, Nick, on, your, on the balls of your feet, Connor, pay attention, take a look over your shoulder before the ball gets to you, without me having to say those things, it's built into this game because they don't want to go in the middle. You two guys can link up back to your games. Connor and Nick, take another blue vest. Connor, take another blue vest, put two in the middle. Two in the middle. The circle's a little bit bigger. So in building, in building the session up, there's a lot of ways that you can add to it. I've just put in a second defender. The game just got more difficult. And just, and just stand still for a moment. Pass me that ball. Greens, you're standing still. You're watching as well. I'll take that ball. Where there was, just put your hand in the air. Just one defender before Blake just stand outside of the center. And there was two decisions to be made, left or right. The game just changed and it became more difficult. There's a second defender. And it could be left or right, the way they're standing right now. They could cut off left or right. And I go central. 
or one could do one thing, one could do the other, and, and I'm forced to go in one direction or the other. But there's more levels and there's more layers. It's more difficult. It just became a little bit more realistic. Continue as you are. So mainly that's a, that's a tactical, that's a tactical add-on. So if I want more thinking, if I want more options and more variety, I've just created that by simply adding another defender. The choice of balls, the futsal ball, given the surface, that makes sense. More success for them, they don't have to deal with the bounce. There's a multitude of variations that you could put in, depending on, and again, the four components, technical, tactical, physical, psychosocial, right, that interaction amongst players. What do you want to get out of it? Well, you can implement that and you can put that in, depending on your conditions and the rules that you put on the game. Both groups stop. One man step back out. One man stay in as the defender. Whoever steps out, just put the vest on the floor. You're no longer a defender. Someone's got to stay in. Now, a little bit on, on the physical. The condition is you must follow your pass. When you pass it, you must follow. Begin. It, it can be one or two touches. It can be one or two touches. As we're trying to read how fast the surface is and their level of success, they were on one touch. They can now take two if they want so that we can get this game up and going. The physical piece put in is the run. Pass, go and support the ball. That's what the rule of pass and follow your pass means. And stop, watch. One of the coaching points I might discuss and talk about this is immediate support. If I'm passing the ball here, I don't pause and then go. When the ball's in with me, it's immediate support. If I want the ball, and Sebastian would do the same. He wouldn't walk there. He would explode there. Technically, what this might create is the following. My foot does not finish where it began, which is that position right there. Ball comes into me. My, my pass is the first step in my run to support the ball. So that is physically and technically some things that I would coach and put in to make these guys better, to have them think about that as they're working. Continue on, both groups. And stop. Stand still. Pass me the ball, please. This time, another physical component is going to be put in. Let's make this circle even a little bit bigger. Come in a little bit closer to me. When I pass the ball, I cannot get it until I've done a push-up. Just put your foot on the ball. I'm you, so just take a knee. Pretend I'm you, so you're not in the game. Now, slide this way a little bit more. Come a little bit closer even. Good. Stand right there. If I pass him the ball and I do a push-up, it means I'm not available right now to get the return pass which means the defender can predict the ball's going that direction and maybe intercept that pass. So this is causing a few things. There's, there's physical and tactical in here. As I go down, my teammate needs to know I'm not available. He changes his position to make sure that there is left and right support on the floor. Okay? He needs to make sure he makes the right decision based on the movement of the defender, and I need to be strong and pop back up to my feet as fast as I can to get back into this game. One or two touches to start. Play. Tyler and Sebastian. Yes. Let's get that push-up in. Don't forget about it. Get down and up. Get down and up.
Now, if we had a box coned out and we had them pass in around the box where they pass, they move, keep playing, guys, keep playing, around the square and, and their first touch was determined by the coach and the pass and the surface of the foot was determined by the coach. They, they, they can become brain dead and almost, and, and, and I see this, go through the motions. It can, it, could be, it can become casual and they can get away with not being on that edge, not being in that place where improvement happens, that level of practice called deep practice. Here, there's, there's no opportunity to be casual unless you want to be in the middle. Become casual go through the motions, and be punished by having to go through the middle. And stop. So, where this starts getting a little bit interesting is in the next phase. Count the passes Barcelona makes. So we use them as an example, and they're a great example to use. And you'll, in, in a match, see many hundreds of passes being connected by Barcelona. Okay. But when Victor Valdez rolls the ball to Puyol, you'll also notice that those hundreds of passes aren't happening on top of Barcelona's 18-yard box. They're happening all over the field. They're trying to take that possession and that passing and control. They're trying to take it somewhere. There's a point to it. So where this has lacked so far is that it all stays in the same place. This time, my rule for these guys is once you connect three passes, you could connect four, five, or six, however many you want, but a minimum of three, your rondo has to go and change to one of the other boxes. Begin. No. No rule. No. Get there and connect. So now they're thinking about Where's the defender? What does my pass look like? What do I have to do to support and make my teammates successful? They also have to think ahead. How many passes was that? Where are we going to go? Where is the other group? We can't go into the same box. You can hear them talk a little bit more to organize and sort some things out. And it's a little bit more realistic in a game where they're traveling somewhere with their possession, not just standing in the same place. So that mistake there by Blacks was sorted out, he knows, he needs to take a look over his shoulder, that box was busy, he could not go there. Recommended numbers on, on these exercises, five versus one, probably gives them the right amount of success to failure. Again, the numbers are a bit too many, but they're all playing a game. At the end of the day, it's not a drill. It's not passing around cones. They're playing a game. Good, and stop. If I could please have Anthony, that little yellow cone, that one cone right there in my hands. And Gavin, that little yellow cone that's upside down in my hands. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Roll the ball there and roll that ball there. Blacks are now playing in that entire space on this side. Greens, you're now playing in that entire space on this side. Nope. So, game's evolving a little bit. One defender, two defender, three defenders, movement. All right, we're going to grow this and try and get it to be more game-like. What's going to happen is the following. When the ball rolls in here, two greens are going to come in. So that's the level of pressure. Send two greens. 
So we still have the rondo, right? So two go in, two go in, and these blacks are trying to keep it from them. When possession is lost, we have that transfer into this box over here. Let's see what that looks like. Begin. That's gone. Ball. That's gone. All of you should be able to keep it from two. So if they get a nick, even a touch, I'm giving it to the other team. That's gone. Put it in, Connor. One touch, one touch, one touch. That's a little bit harder. I'm trying to help out. And you lost it because that's two touch. Ball's in here. You have as many as you want. One or two touch, and that's gone. So what we've got here, and just freeze, what we've got here is now transition. Right? Blacks are attacking right now. Send two greens in. Blacks are attacking. AJ, you let Austin intercept the ball. Go ahead and do that. Blacks are now defending. Austin puts the ball in here, and they have to try and get their blacks in there before they can get set up. And the defense, Austin back, give me one other green in here. And the defense, who was, who was defending, play it in, are now attacking. They have to get in there and link up so that greens has the full amount of support possible. They want it to be as easy as possible. Continue. And that's gone. Go back to your sides. Black's there, green's there. Now, we can throw pieces in to hit on those four areas of a training session. All right, so you'll, you'll see some interesting things here and some dynamics, some leadership, uh, that psychosocial piece or the fourth criteria. What I need you guys to do is get a number one through however many you have. So this will help make our training session more effective. All right, we're seeing some leaders pop out. They know the drill. Typically, you have everyone choose their favorite number, and it becomes three number sevens and two number fours. All right, we had someone step up and say, you're number one, you're number two, you're number three, you're number four. Get a new number. Greens, are we good? Colin, what number are you? Are you sure? You're six. What number are you? So they seem to have this. What happens is, guys, pass me that ball, please. What happens is I need number one and, and two to go, and then next time it'll be three and four, and next time it'll be five and six, and then all the way back through. So you have to remember who's got to go in and defend. Okay? Begin. One and two. One touch, one touch. And that ball's gone. Ball. That was outside the cones, guys. That ball's gone. That was outside the cones. That ball's gone. It was touched. Hide the ball. Hide the ball from defenders. Don't let them have it. That ball's gone. Put it in, Connor. That ball's gone. We can do better than that. Good job. Good decision, Austin. And that's gone. Back to your sides, please. So 
We're trying to cut down on inactivity. We want to make this fun. We want them to continually learn. Send two greens into this half. So if blacks are really successful, walk in please, Anthony, go ahead. If blacks are really successful, they should be able to, they should be successful to hide this ball from these two green players. With that ratio of attackers to defenders, that should be the case, which means a lot of downtime for these players over here. All right? So there might be some coachable moments where I freeze it and we talk some things out that I would want them to see. And if it's a day for that, it's a day for that. But there are some things that we can do to make this engaging for both groups. When you're waiting, you have to pass and follow the ball one touch. When you hear me say dead, you know two defenders are going to come. Okay? Begin. So I've got a game on one side and some techniques being practiced on the other. And that's gone. Play. Ball's gone. So we've got the game on this side, and we've got technique, passing and moving, being implemented on that side. Whatever they do while they wait, you can put in as coaches what's important, what was the skill. That ball's dead. And stop. Very good. Pass those balls over here again, please. So that's an example of trying to be a little bit more economical. If you want your session this week to be high on the technical component and lower on the tactical component, then they should be practicing their technique of passing and receiving while they wait. But if this week it is high on a tactical component in your curriculum, then they might be waiting, watching, studying the successes and mistakes of these guys over here and listening to your coaching points. We're going to make it more realistic. Three defenders go. There's no limit on your touches. There's no limit on your touches, but send three defenders. Play. We'll still have these guys passing and receiving. That ball's dead. Send three. Play. What are you doing? Oh, there it is. You've got something to do over there. Good turn. Ball's dead. Ball's dead. Sebastian, I don't need that to happen. Leave that ball there next time. Anthony, space was here. Ball's dead. Ball's gone. And time. Back to your sides, please. Roll those balls over here. So progressing towards the game. The game is as many of the opposition as you. Whether it's 8v8, 11 versus 11, that's how the game is played. It's not played 5 versus 1, but, but that's a training method to put in success to the things that we're doing. Just limited amounts of opposition. Build that opposition up. So we went from one defender to two defenders to three defenders, and we can keep growing that. This is just in the same area. So we're going we're to look at direction. And it's going to be this. Gavin, at this end, let me get a black at that end. Let me have two, uh, two greens in here. So if we use our imaginations, the situation is this. Black, just use the space a little bit better. Our goalkeeper, our center back, won the ball. He distributes it to his left back. Left back into midfield, midfield into striker. Connor, hold that ball. Now our striker just had the ball. We progress down the field from our back to our middle to our attacking thirds. Now we use our imaginations. Pretend Connor 
who has the ball at his feet as the goalkeeper or our center back, build again, and we're heading in that direction. Into our midfield. Can we find our striker? And we now have a game over here that has direction. All right? We're trying to go somewhere up and down the field. Okay? So when the ball comes your way, let's make sure we get someone at one end and someone at the other because you're gonna, you guys are going to be doing this as well. Begin. Can we find the target? Good. Good. Who's open? Can we get back the other way? That ball's gone. Here we go. Send two blocks only. And that ball's gone. Let's try and rotate Connor and Gavin every time here. Who's in here? Send two greens. Good job. Can we turn? Yes. Unlucky. Ball's in here. Good. Can we break pressure coming this way? Find the target? Good. As good as a point right there. Good job. That ball's gone. Here we go. Can we find our target? Good. Play, play. Good. Get it there. Can we go forwards? Good job. We broke pressure. Score the goal. Good. Make that an accurate pass. Broke pressure again. Score the goal. So it's realistic in trying to find the center forward's feet and then build up again. That ball's gone. Here we go. That ball's gone. It was used carelessly. He knows that. Play. And he made up for it. Good job, Sebastian. Roll that ball into there. Roll that ball into there. Play. That ball's gone. Here we go. You're the target again, Blake. Let's rotate our targets out at each end, please. That ball's gone. Here we go. That ball's gone. Here we go. We have a game within a game. All right, so there's a game here with direction. There's a defensive area. They're trying to progress forward into the attacking area. Two smaller games within one bigger game. Adding complexity, getting these guys to think. Good. And if you guys would collect all the futsal balls once again and put them there. I need these three yellow disc cones. Only those three up and in. And make sure you know your numbers. Get with your group. Get your numbers again. How many numbers do you have, Black? Ten. Let's put numbers one through four inside this big yellow square, and the rest of the numbers go around the outside. On the outside, try to go green, black, green, black, green, black. So try not to have two blacks in a row out there or two greens in a row. Is our fourth black in here? Who's number four? We need number one, two, three, and four in the middle. Okay. You can forget who's been in the game and who's been out of the game. The numbers allows everyone to get that equal time. Every two minutes, 
number one through four, then five, six, seven, and eight come in, nine, ten, back to one and two, and you rotate through your players. You don't forget about somebody. They don't get lost in the session. As they get the hang of it, it also allows us to transition into things a lot quicker. Now, blacks, greens, it's a four versus four in here, but you have your shirt, your extra guy on the outside to help you keep possession. So greens, you can connect with those greens on the outside. Blacks, you can connect with those blacks. More game-like, four defenders. So we went from one defender in our rondos, we're building up two defenders, three defenders, now we're at four. Even more realistic. Let's see what it looks like, go ahead. No, no rule on touches, Blake. There's no rule on your touches. Whatever you need. We as coaches have to decide what's important to us. Is it that that pass is in the air, that the weight of the pass is too hard? Do we keep it in one area too long? Is changing the point of attack important to us? Is it the defensive side? Is it what the greens as they defend right now? Is that important? That's what you focus on. The, game, the games allow for all of that, but you as the coach decide. The bottom line is, it is a game. It is a game. They're having fun. They are playing. There's no drills. Not that there's not a time to drill skill and through a volume of repetitions improve, but in a way to hit all four criteria of technical, tactical, physical, and psychosocial games, little games, little interactive playing opportunities can provide all of those things. And stop. Five, six, seven, and eight. You are in. Go ahead, Nini, play. So that was a smooth transition of another set of eight players inside the middle area. Rather than me asking whose turn is it, everyone's going to get a turn. Here we go. I'm here for them. I, as the coach, am here to make sure that they learn and have fun. If that means supplying balls, picking up cones, chasing balls, handing out vests, that's my job. And stop. New rule. New rule. When you play to one of the players on the outside, you replace them and they come in. Go ahead and do that. See what it looks like. Go ahead, you're in now, Tyler. Good. So their brains have to pick this up. If the other way becomes casual and standard, tweak the game. Change the games. Soccer, soccer games change all the time. You go up a goal, you might change the way you play. You go down a goal, you might change the way you play. You come across a, a certain surface, the field conditions, you change the way you play. The weather, right? The referee. And how, and how they're deciding situations on the field. All of those things can mean you went out and started one way, but the game changed. They have to adapt, they have to evolve, and they have to figure out things, even the adversity. Good, and stop. Now, now, those goalkeepers, put the gloves on, stand in the goals that I asked you. 
All of the futsal balls need to go in that goal down there. Nick? Those three yellow cones in front of that goal are up. Marco? Those three yellow cones in front of that goal are up. Blacks at this end, greens at that end. Blacks, there are three orange cones. Spread yourselves evenly at each of those three orange cones. Green, two orange cones, counterattack cone, counterattack cone. Nini, orange cone. Now, it still numbers up. We're going to goal. This is, this is not quite a game, but a lot, a lot closer to what a game looks like. Pass me the ball, please, Caleb. Three players, one from each cone is going to come out. Pretend I'm you. So you'll stay. You're out and you're out. Here are three players. Give me a defender and a defender, Colin. Yes. So we've got a three versus two. We don't have a six or seven or eight player advantage like we did in rondos with the 8v1. We just have the one player advantage here. Here's how that happened. Come on in here and have the ball. Now the game is 8v8. It's 11 versus 11. It's 5 versus 5. Whatever the case might be. There's as many of them as there is of us. But how does this situation of 3 versus 2 happen in a game? This is how it happened. I dove in and he went around me. Now there's a three versus two of blacks versus greens, but only until I can recover and catch up. So they're going to work at speed to take advantage and do this. There's also some transition pieces put in that we'll look at as the game goes. So let's start back up here and look at these three V2s. As soon as the ball rolls out, greens, you're up and in. Roll it out. Play. Three versus two. Get ready for transition. That ball's dead, reload. Those two defenders become this player here. Colin, you're in there. New ball, Caleb, play. Counter, counter. This player's now in. Good counter attack. Reload. Defenders are in here. So we saw, and just hold right there, in earlier sessions today, there is offsides going in this direction. So this is the attacking half of the field. Blacks can be offsides. When that goalkeeper makes a save or those defenders win the ball, these counterattackers waiting are not offsides because they're in their own half. They're in their own half. Even though they can score at the end of it, they're in their own half. So offsides going this way, no offsides going that way. Play. Good, finish. Good. Reload. Play. Ball in, Blake. Let's go. You're forcing it down that way. We've got a four versus three right now, and that's how the game's built. And that's how the game's built. Three. Come on out. Let's look at this. I want to break this down in a little bit more detail. Two out. Two defenders out. Three. Come on. So we've got the three versus two. Roll it into Nini here. Let's pretend that he won the ball. Now our counterattackers are engaged, and we've got a four versus three the other way. And we've got some good transition going up and down the field. All right, it can happen at speed. Our next phase would be just a, a, a straight game, even up. Five versus five, six versus six, whatever we want to do. But that would be the next phase. So I'll let this go for another minute or two. Have a look at these guys playing this transition game. We like this to teach numbers, finding numbers up situations, exploiting them at speed, and ultimately finishing the ball. But if we are to lose the ball, transition from defense to attack very quickly. Let's reload it and start again. Begin. Counter. Find that pass early and on the floor, Nick. Good. Reload. Reload, keeper. Let's start it up.
Well done. Counter, counter. Good finish, reload. Can we finish? And just stop, stand still. My coaching point would be, remember, it's not three versus two forever. It's three versus two only until the third defender recovers and get there. So you only have so much time. If I could have all my players stand across the white line facing me. So Rondo, just, just to review, a player or players in the middle, others around trying to keep possession. We're using that to teach technique, tactics, a physicality, a, a psychosocial component. Not, not too overly drill oriented with some of the things we're doing. They're playing a game right from the beginning. It's fun. They're engaged. It doesn't get casual. If it does, if the 5v1 becomes casual, make it five versus two. Or make it pass and follow your pass in the rondo. Change the game. That's on you to, to make those conditions and put in those conditions to keep their minds, not so much their bodies, but their brains thinking. As soon as it becomes easy, we raise the stakes. We add direction and we go up and down to it. All right, or we add the push-up, or we add, you know, just one touch. It becomes more difficult. But we want to keep their brains engaged. They're good players. I thank them for being here. I thank you guys for, for hanging out and paying attention. But good job, guys. Well done. We could just get that.